How's it going everyone? It's your boy Dak908 aka The Dig Dug himself and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a special video. Today we're going to be fighting the Ancient Leshen. Now the Ancient Leshen he is actually a DLC monster if you will. Part of the Witcher 3 collaborative series. So off the top let's talk about what the Leshen actually is. Now the Ancient Leshen is actually particularly a particular rather type of Leshen from the Witcher series who are well versed in their manners of magic and how in which they live. Now, Alessian is just a forest dwelling monster, have control over plants and animals, and for the most part are a huge nuisance. The ancient ones, however, the ones who live much longer and actually develop lots of different, more prominent skills, they are a lot more dangerous than the standard counterpart. Now, early on, I'm going to actually give you guys the weaknesses to this monster because it's a very important thing, and you should totally know this before you even fight the monster, even before I actually fight the monster in the video, but his main weakness is that of fire followed by dragon and then thunder now to do the absolute most damage to him you're going to want to hit him in the head and i mean that's kind of par for the course for most monsters but for this particular fight there's not too many other places you can actually really hit him that's really noteworthy because he's actually a humanoid type monster who stands on his two feet a bipedal creature if you will one of the few in the monster Hunter series to even do so because of that his head in order to actually get to it is going to be a bit more difficult more so than others but it's still something you can do and the best way to actually do this is to get on the higher ground on him jump down from different ledges and maybe if you do get a knockdown or break one of his parts he will kneel down and you can actually aim smack for his head because it'll be widely exposed now to do this in the best of manners you want to actually bring fire or dragon like i said before thunder if you're in a real pinch but at this point in the game you should have some fire because the only way to actually complete this quest or even have this quest even be able to play is to be at least hr 50 and by then you should have at least one fire weapon uh but other than that that's for the most part the main weaknesses about him, but let's talk about what it takes to actually fight him successfully. At the start of every successful hunt, you must bring your items. The items usually dictate the flow of the actual fight, and this particular fight is going to be a very long one, and it has a very, very, very weird flow to it. Regardless though, this particular fight, if you guys remember the Behemoth fight where there was particular roles in there, this one is a little akin to that. Essentially, this one only has two roles though. Healer and DPS. There's going to be a lot of healing being done and a lot of DPS being done as well. So since your boy's the everyman, the quintessential average Joe, if you will. So for the most part, your boy was doing the DPS. Now as the DPS role, essentially the most important thing you have to bring are flash pods. Flash pods and flash bugs. Why you ask? You're going to be using lots of these. Now the flash pods in this particular fight are going to literally make or break your actual run. If you don't have any, you there are going to be certain segments of this fight where you will not actually be able to progress because you need them to make him not do a thing. We'll get on to what that thing is in a second. Now, outside of the flash pods and flash bugs, you want to bring mega bombs and the combinations required to actually make it. So bring large barrels, large barrel bombs, uh, Devil's Blight, Gunpowder, the whole nine to make as many bombs as possible. Life Powder, since you're not actually the healer role, it is nice to heal your friends when you kind of see them getting bodied and you yourself are just not really bodied and you kind of have to weapon up. Bring the Life Powder so that way you can actually heal your friends when you have to need to actually do so. Now, the most important thing next to the Flash Pods is your Hunter Rune Stone. If you do not have a Hunter Rune Stone, you probably can't even play this quest. But if you do have the Hunter Rune Stone, please bring it. It is probably the cornerstone to this entire quest. You might get away with the flash pause, but you're really gonna need that Hunter Rune Stone, bro. DPS roll aside, the healer roll is the most important role, doing parts of the fact that you have to keep everyone alive. The best way to fulfill your role is to actually use the Mushroom Mancer skill. Now, the Mushroom Mancer skill, its main focus is to actually eat mushrooms that give off a sort of property. So, for example, you take a blue mushroom, usually you couldn't eat it, but with the Mushroom Mancer skill, you can. That blue mushroom essentially becomes a potion. Another example is if you take a Nitro Shroom, it becomes a Mega Demon drug. Now, if you have wide range, it goes to not just you but all your friends in the nearby vicinity as well now outside of all the mushrooms and all the potions you have to be taking as the healer you might want to actually invest in the far caster now the far caster if you don't know what it is it's an item that you can actually use that'll immediately fast travel you back to the nearest camp even if you're in battle doing this allows you to actually go into camp and acquire more items more potions more mushrooms etc then coming back into the action to resume your role now that we're all familiar with the roles, the DPS and the healer roles that is, let's talk about actually fighting this guy. We talked about the weaknesses, we talked about his, his weak spots. Let's talk about the things you need to actually do to fight him because there's a lot. There's a lot you have to actually be ready for. There's a lot of things you have to take into account. But uh, firstly, the first main thing you need to take into account is the fact that he hits very, very hard. I absolutely 
recommend. I was judging on different sets depending on what role you would play. That's not gonna that's not gonna matter. You need at least bare minimum 475 defense. If you can get more, great. Absolutely run that. On top of that, you should probably come in here with 200 health. Now, if you don't know how to get 200 health, decorations, vitality decoration. Put three of them in. It gives you extra 50. Eat for 50 when you go to eat. 200 health. You're gonna need it because once you get to a certain defense number, it's essentially pennies on the dollar. Where health actually helps a lot better in that regard. Now, when you approach the legend in area 12, there is a boulder in the middle of the map. He's standing directly underneath it. Shoot it with anything out of your slinger, and that's free 4,000 points of damage. Now, as you fight him in this first area, the handler will tell you, hey, use your slinger to actually interrupt him when he's teleporting. There is nothing you can do about him teleporting. He is going to teleport. It's just what he does. Now, what you can do to help yourself fight against the teleportation is use headphones. Plug up. Figure out a way to actually make it to where you can hear the game in your ears a lot better so that way you can hear where he actually teleports to. Also, if you're not about that life, using the lock-on feature in the game will help you figure out where he is immediately. If you lack any of these things, take a good look at your map and try your best to navigate that way. A good tactic to use when he comes out of his teleportation is to hit him with a little bit of Igni. Igni is your hunter runestone. That is the fire. Fire actually affects him in a multitude of ways. If you hit him enough with it, it will actually dissipate the crows on his body, making it to where it's not as tough to actually get in, and it'll also cause him to be stunned, giving you a free couple of seconds to do some free damage. A few more ways to get a few extra hits of damages is to incapacitate him at any means possible. Paralysis and knockout. Now, if you want to be nice with it, a paralysis styled hammer would be the coup de gras. Now let's say you've been fighting him for about a good 10-15 minutes. Now you should be what's known as phase 3. Now phase 3 is a very difficult phase. Once you get into this phase, she will say, the handler, oh he's close to death or whatever. My man is not. He has lots of life left. The problem with him in this particular phase is that he has a whole new move. This move has been christened Bird Nova. Now it's called the Bird Nova because he curls his body up and lets loose a huge mass of birds. This is an unblockable attack. If you get hit with it, you will die. Okay, it's facts. You get hit with this, you're done. You will die, your whole team will die, it's curtains. Now the only way to get him to interrupt him while doing this is to use those flash pods we mentioned. Use those flash pods, get them out. Make sure you and the rest of your team have them equipped and on deck. When he does this, throw it out. Now the handler will make a notation about this saying he's doing something different. But if you're not about that life, take note to the fight. The fight itself will be a little different. The screen will rumble and the camera will zoom out showing that he's about to do something epic. Once this is the case, throw that flash pot out, hit him smack in the face with it and you should be okay. Now making it this far in the quest is pretty difficult in and of itself, but the thing is, this particular quest is a little special. There's actually two paths you can actually take. Now what's known as the Eastern and the Western path. If you've been watching thus far, I've actually been on the Eastern path, which is actually the harder way to actually do this quest. To make the quest easier on yourself, you must actually do good. It's kind of weird. The game rewards you for doing good. If you do good in the very first area, area 12, it will allow you to go on the western path. The western path is easier because it's a lot more open and in phase 3 he doesn't actually do the bird nova. Crazy. He only does the bird nova in the final phase. But it's a lot easier, again like I said, because the air is more open. There's a lot more different things for you to jump off of to actually get those spam mounts in. Whereas on the eastern side, everything's a bit more clustered together. There's lots of blind sides. There's lots of trees in the way. There's lots of vegetation. It just becomes more for him than it is for you in terms of the battle. Coming out on top on playing on either side is essentially down to straight skill. So if you're just really good with it, you take all these tips to heart and you really focus on what needs to be done and remember all the quirks that he actually has, you're gonna be okay. It's just gonna take a bit more work if you're on the left side than it will be for the right. Now with that being said, let's say you are successful. Let's say you do come out of this on top and you're rewarded with the goods. Now what are you gonna do with those goods? You're gonna make some armor and the thing is, you're gonna make some pretty decent armor to say the least. The armor you make is essentially full set armor from the Witcher series, which is par for the course, but the thing is the skills on them are impeccable. So the first armor you're going to be making is what's known as Siri armor. If I'm to be understood here, the Siri, not the Siri, but Siri is the Witcher's daughter in the game. But the armor comes with Evade Window 5, Free Element 3, Constitution 2, Evade Extender 2, Divine Blessing 2, and actually Razor Sharp. 
So as a set, that's pretty godlike. Granted, I mean, it's a full armor set. You have to have all these skills. You can't mix and match. But there's a couple of slots you can kind of figure out what you actually want to do with it. But at the end of the day, it's just a pretty solid set. Now, not only do you get to make series armor, you actually get to make her weapons in the game. Granted, I'm going to tell you right now, I can't pronounce that. So we're just going to call it series dual blades. Now, these dual blades are probably the best dual blades in the game because they have 294 raw, which is the second highest in the game flat but it comes with natural white sharpness something that the Diablos ones do not have and on top of that we're looking at well not positive affinity but zero affinity as opposed to like negative 30 that the Diablos ones have so essentially these dual blades are actually better than the Diablos ones put the elementalist on there and you're looking at about 340 raw all day looking nice and beautiful last but not least we're gonna get some layered armor now you're gonna get girls layered armor you're gonna get series layered armor now in order to get them you just need to complete the quest and get what's known as the mutagen it's kind of a hard to get item that you get from the quest but do it enough you'll get the stuff you only need one for each so it's not that big of a deal but speaking of sets, I will give you guys my set. Again, I am a Lancer. You might not find a lot of success out of the set, but it gave me a lot of success when fighting this monster. Granted, my set goes as follows. Guard 5, Handicraft 4, Health Boost 3, Quick Sheet 3, Flinch Free 3, Evade Window 2, Evade Extender 2, and Critical Element. Granted, the Critical Element was there because I'm using what's known as the Kajar Crest King, the Arc Temper Goat Butter, Rathalos Lance. Essentially though, if you can use your own set, I recommend anything that's pretty meta. This set isn't super meta, it's more akin to like how I like to play, but you're going to want to do as much damage as quickly as you can, so the meta seems to really work out here. Remember though, high defense, 475 or plus, and you're going to be in good hands. But honestly though guys, with that being said, that's essentially all I can really give you guys in terms to how to fight the Ancient Leshen. So with that being said, it's been your boy Dak Nanaway. Thank you guys so much who actually stayed with me all night in the stream to help make this video possible. I'm looking at all the folks down there. Yo, if you were one of the people, go ahead and hit the like button. Actually, yo, squad in the comments. Let me know, yo, say, tell me your favorite thing about the stream in the comments right now. Let's squad up on that. Just, just, you already know what it is. You were there. Say that word, that one word. It's, a, it's like a four letter word. The, the one, you know the one. Say that one. Put it in the comments. Get nuts with it. And guys, if you actually enjoyed the video, thank you so much for coming and kicking it. And if you really want to support your mans, hit the like button. Subscribe. Do whatever you got to do. Share the video if you like because I worked hard on this video. Actually, me and my Duggas, we worked hard on this video. This was a group effort. Okay, if you made it this far, we're now in... We're in a segment where nothing matters. I can ramble because it's the ramble section. Don't worry about me rambling no more, Gobi. Don't worry about me rambling no more, Tech Priest. It's all good. Your boy out here, we did it. The video is done. So anyway, if you was in the stream, shout out to you guys for helping your, boy, helping your mans out. Not your boy. I'm a man now. Helping your mans out. And uh, if you're new to the channel and you kind of like what you heard so far or whatever, we got a couple more of these coming at you real soon. Like They're going to be a bit more better in terms of, I guess, quality. But... Nevertheless, we're going to keep it real just like this. Shout out to the homies out there at Capcom for hooking up with the people at The Witcher. Who are they called again? Red something? For making a great game and a great collaboration. It was really fun. It's been your boy. Take care. Peace.